how to draw one deployment diagram. Deployment diagram represents the deployment view of a system. It is related to the component diagram because in case of deployment diagram we are going to say we are going to depict that how these components are getting deployed onto the different nodes in the deployment diagram. A deployment diagram consists of nodes and nodes are nothing but physical hardware used to deploy the application. So why this deployment diagram is so important? So to discuss why this deployment diagram is so important and what are the different factors which will be decided on this deployment diagram, we are having this set of some parameters. So that is the performance of the total system, the scalability, maintainability and the portability. So these are the features which will be which will be obtained and which will be analyzed going through the deployment diagram. Before drawing a deployment diagram, the following artifacts should be identified. So what are the artifacts we require in the deployment diagram? One is the nodes and another one is the relationship among nodes, the relative connectivities and the mode of connectivity. So all these relationships between these nodes will be pre run to, to us before going for the deployment diagram implementation. Deployment diagram shows all of the nodes of the network, the connections between them and the processes that will run on each one. So at first we are going to discuss the processor. A processor is any machine that has the processing power which can process instructions, micro instructions to execute those micro instructions so that the program can execute. The servers, the workstations and other machines with the processors are included in this respective category. The scheduling field documents the type of the processor scheduling used by the processor. So now what is the scheduling? We know that processor will process processes and how these processes will get selected. Multiple processes might be waiting to get processed by one processor. So what is the scheduling criteria with the help of which the process which is waiting in the waiting queue will be selected. Here we have considered two different scheduling criteria. One is a preemptive, indicates that the high priority processes can preempt low priority processes. Let us suppose a process is in operation, is, is being processed by the processor and that process is having priority lesser than another process which, is, which has come right now and having the priority higher and waiting. In case of preemptive scheduling, the lower priority process will have to preempt the processor before getting itself completed to make a room for the higher priority process to come and get its processing. Non preemptive that means indicates that the processes have no priority and the current process executes until it is finished and at which time the next process will begin and in the meantime until the first process which is now in processing is getting completed the other processes will be found them in the waiting queue for in the waiting state. Next one is the cyclic. So indicates that the control cycles between the processes, each process is given a set, um, set amount of the time to get execute and then control passes to the next process. So that is known as a cyclic that means a time quantum, a time slice will be given to each and every process and when this quantum will expire then the quantum will be allocated to the another process in a round robin scheduling way. Next one is the executive. So that indicates that there is some sort of computational algorithm that controls the scheduling. So along with that preemptive scheduling, along with that non preemptive, preemptive scheduling, we are discussing some other scheduling criteria here. Next one is the manual indicates that the processes are scheduled by the user on the manual basis. So here you can find that that is one processor and this processor is being shaded here. You can find that there is a, a difference between this icon of this processor and this icon of this device. Obviously it will vary from UML software to UML software and here there is a connection which is indicating that this respective device it may be a card reader, it may be a printer which is not doing any processing. So that is why it is a mere a device which is not executing any code but this processor is having the capability to do the processing and it can make our program get executed. So that is why there is a processor icon and there is a 
device icon and that is the connectivity in between. So next one is a device. A device is a machine or piece of hardware without processing power as we have discussed earlier and devices include items such as dumb terminals, printers, scanners, card readers, card punchers and so on. We are having this connections, so connections between that device and the processors. A connections represents some type of hardware coupling between two entities and any entity is either a processor or a device. The hardware coupling is be, will be, can be direct such as this RS 232C port or 232 port number, there is a cable or indirect such as satellite to ground communication. So connections are usually bidirectional that means the data can flow in either direction. So that is known as the connection. So in this way we have discussed all the related components, all the related icons which will be used in our component diagram design. Thanks for watching this video.